The January 19th, 2021 virtual legislative, legislative meeting of the Anne Arundel County Council is now in session. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Ms. Hare? Present. Ms. Picker? Present. Mr. Holke? Present. Mr. Prusky? Here. Ms. Fiedler? Present. Ms. Rodman? Present. Ms. Lacey? Present. Madam Auditor, Ms. Smith? Present. And Madam Legislative Council, Ms. Shewitt? Present. Thank you. Madam Chair, all council members are present. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Please pause for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Ms. Hare. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this evening in, in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, the holiday yesterday, I thought it would be appropriate to um, use one of his quotes. People fail to get along because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they have not communicated with each other. So in light of that, tonight and this year, I thought that was a good reminder for myself and for everyone to listen generously and communicate thoughtfully. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Hare. Madam Secretary, please read the Open Meetings Act statement. The county attorney has asked that I read the following statement. The Maryland Open Meetings Act, a state law, requires public meetings to be open to the public and to be held in places reasonably accessible to individuals who would like to attend these meetings. In addition, the provisions of the county charter and the rules of the county council require meetings to be open to the public and held at the county seat, meaning Annapolis. The virtual format of this meeting of the county council is due to the COVID-19 emergency and is necessary in light of the serious health risks associated with public gatherings, as well as the various executive orders from the governor and, and the county executive limiting public gatherings. While a virtual meeting of this type was not envisioned by the Open Meetings Act, steps have been taken to ensure that this virtual meeting includes alternate accessibility features that the Open Meetings Act Compliance Board and the courts have reviewed and approved, such as having a call-in number that allows anyone with a telephone to call and listen to the meeting, broadcasting the meeting with video and audio on cable TV and on the web, allowing written public comments to the legislation be filed with the clerk and considered by the council, and now allowing the public to call in or appear via Zoom and testify live. The County Office of Law has opined that the public access provided by this technology makes this virtual meeting reasonably accessible to the public as required by the OMA. The Office of Law has also for reviewed whether with these technological features in place, it is still necessary to suspend Council Rules 3105 and 3106 that require public participation and reasonable seating for the public and the media. The conclusion is that it is not necessary to suspend these rules for the same reason they have concluded that the measures implemented by the Council for virtual meetings satisfy the, reasonably access the reasonable accessibility requirement under the OMA. The virtual format of these meetings allows public participation and media access as required by the rules and also allows unlimited participation that is not subject to seat capacity limits in the chambers or in the building. For these reasons, they have concluded that the requirements of Rules 3105 and 3106 are being satisfied and therefore it is not necessary to waive these rules. Council has also asked whether it is necessary to suspend Rule 3102 and 3103, which require the meeting to be held at the county seat. In 2013, at the request of the council, the Office of Law opined that a council member who is appearing at a meeting via a live video monitor would satisfy the venue requirement through virtual presence. It is also noted that the administrative officer to the council controls the hearings and is present at, in the Arundel Center during meetings and the virtual meeting is hosted by the assistant administrative officer from a location in Annapolis. Those factors support the Office of Law's conclusion that the meetings are being held at the county seat 
and therefore it is not necessary to suspend rules 3102 and 3103. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read the ethics statement. The Ethics Commission has asked that I advise you that under certain circumstances, members of the public may qualify as lobbyists when they testify before the County Council. If so, the law requires that certain information be filed with the Ethics Commission. The Chairman of the Ethics Commission has asked that those who wish to testify in any form review the general information on lobbying sheet located on the Ethics website under Forms and Publications. If there are any questions about lobbying requirements, please contact the Ethics Commission at 410-222-4413. Thank you. We will now open our invitation to audience. Madam Secretary, do we have any comments or communications on any subject not included in the printed agenda re received from members of the public? Uh, no, Madam Chair, we've had no submissions of written testimony for invitation to audience. Then we will now hear from members of the public who signed up ahead of time. We have five individuals signed up to speak on matters not listed on our agenda. When it is your turn, please unmute yourself and begin by stating your name and address for the record. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. First up is Anna Cheney. Ms. Cheney, if you could attempt to unmute yourself. Madam Chair, if you, we can swing back around to Ms. Cheney and move on to the next person, if you like. I'm here, sorry. Oh, there she is. Just okay. in time. Please state your name and address for the record. You have two minutes. Uh, Anna Cheney, 5801 Brookswoods Road, Lothian, Maryland. Thank you, Madam Chair and Council members for this opportunity. I want to propose clear, positive, and doable actions regarding our county's response to any future pandemic or health emergency situation. With COVID-19, I believe that we have reacted to the best of our ability as a nation, state, and county, with one exception. And now that we've been through this, it is clearly providing an opportunity to improve our sustainability as a community, county, state, and species. First and foremost, I want to thank anyone who has supported the recovery of our county in any way, shape, or form. This observation and request in no way takes any merit away from our collaborative response to COVID-19. I would like to request that this legislative body draft legislation to require our county administration, our health department, and our school system to institute educational systems and services that support the fortitude of the human body to prepare prevent and sustain life in the face of the current and any future superbugs or pandemic of any sort. Number one, PSA should be required to include helpful scientifically based information on choices that we can make as individuals and communities to fortify our own bodies, as specified and reported by the NIH, CDC, John Hopkins Integrative Medicine and Digestive Center, and other appropriate institutions and research centers as specified by the health officer. Number two, through the health department, offer consultations to residents as to how they can make lifestyle choices that promote strong, healthy, and vibrant immune systems. Number three, to incorporate human anatomy, physiology, and function into our school's curriculum from preschool to 12th grade so that our children are more aware of their bodies, how they work, and what lifestyle choices actually do to their own bodies. Not only will these three things provide for a much lower fatality rate in general and during an emergency, but it will fulfill the county executive, executive's mission of Anne Arundel County being the best place. How could any place be better if we are the healthiest and most vibrant of all? It's time for a paradigm shift and now is the time. I respectfully request that this legislative body mobilize and collectively do something about this so that we are not a locale that promotes fear and dependency, but trust, confidence, and sustainability in all ways. I thank, thank you, you very much Jean. for your consideration. Thank you for thank you for your remarks. Um, next, we're moving on to Joseph Masher. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Joseph Masher. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Bowtie Cinemas. I'm at 641 Danbury Road in Richfield, Connecticut. Um, Madam Chair and the Council members, I'd like to thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak this evening and also for any help that you've given us in the past for getting our theaters reopened in Anne Arundel County. 
Bowtie Cinemas has the two theaters in Annapolis. We have one in Westfield Mall and the one in the Harbor Center. My company has suffered an immense amount of terrible, terrible losses in 2020 due to the pandemic, as have other businesses. However, in 49 other states, uh, we are allowed to either be fully open or partially open. One of those states is Maryland. However, in Anne Arundel County, an order was put in December by um, the county executive to uh, shut theaters down until January 13th. And then that order was extended after the restaurant uh, part of it was, uh, was changed. So I'm asking for your help this evening in getting our theaters open. We'd like to be open. We'd like to put our county residents back to work. Um, we're also grateful we've received two uh, very nice grants, uh, one for each theater from the state. And in order to accept and use those grants, we have to be open. Um, our theater industry follows a protocol program called CinemaSafe. You can find the protocols at cinemasafe.org. Uh, they were developed with a leading epidemiologist and blessed by Dr. Fauci. And to date, we have had zero cases of COVID transmission. Again, zero cases of COVID transmission traced to a movie theater in the United States or anywhere in the world, in fact. My company's number one theater is the one in the Westfield Mall. And if we don't get it open soon, my company is going to uh, fade into oblivion after 120 years of being the oldest theater circuit in North America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Masher. Next, we have Jason Baker. Mr. Baker, you have two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, uh, my name is Jason Baker, and my address is 294 Forest Lane, Arnold, Maryland. I'd like to start by thanking you for giving me the time to speak with you this evening. Um, I'm the general manager of Bowtie Cinemas in Annapolis Mall, and I've lived in the county for over 11 years, and I've been in the movie industry for 20 years, and I want to speak to you today about reopening movie theaters. After being closed on and off for nearly a full year, it has been an extremely difficult time for the industry, my staff of over 100 employees, my wife and four young children, and for me personally. We cannot help but wonder when and if movie theaters will reopen. While fun, funds run out and fears sit in, I, along with some of my peers, were forced to find temporary empo employment outside of Anne Arundel County. We travel further distances, making lower wages and are working more hours. The majority of my peers and staff have not been as fortunate and have been on unemployment since March. To date, I have seen no mention of a plan to reopen theaters in Anne Arundel County. As a result of these shutdowns, more studios are releasing content on demand. If these shutdowns continue, will we have anything to come back to? We have a plan, mission, and strategy to open our theaters in a safe manner. If you haven't already, I kindly ask you to review cinemasafe.org to review our safety procedures. We have ensured we can open safely, sell tickets in a manner that provides social distancing, and we'll be using PPE throughout our facilities. We have a very strong plan in place per the CDC guidelines that will not spread COVID and will allow several others to return to work safely while providing a form of entertainment for those who want to do so safely outside of their homes. All of us in the movie industry want to return to work and receive a steady paycheck rather than an unemployment dependence or stimulus check. There has been no COVID cases linked to movie theaters, not a single one. So we kindly ask that you reopen our theaters in Anne Arundel County so we can provide for our families and safely return to work. We appreciate your support and we are hopeful we can open soon so the theater can help Anne Arundel County's economy by putting people back to work. Please help us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Next, we have Jennifer Adney. Madam Secretary, I don't see Ms. Abney on the list. No, Madam Chair, I do not see her on the list either. So she may not have joined the meeting. All right, we'll move on and call her again after our next person. Alderman Brooks Chandelmeyer. Good evening, everyone. I want to thank, uh, for the record, my name is Alderman Brooks Chandelmeyer. I live in Stone Creek Road in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, I understand that Councilman Volke is going to introduce another attempt to strip County Executive Pittman of his emergency powers, despite cases skyrocketing in our county. He's probably going to say something about the County Executive doing this only for power, just like he did last time. 
instead of trying to keep people safe. It's probably going to moan about partisan rejection, even though it's a blatantly partisan bill. And just stop wasting our time. Seriously. That's my time. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. And do we have Jennifer Abney? Doesn't look like it, Madam Secretary. No, Madam Chair, she is uh, not in the meeting. Okay. Then the invitation to audience is now closed. Is there any item any council member would like to place on the agenda? Seeing none. May I have a motion that the partial reading of any bill, resolution, amendment to a bill or resolution or minutes constitutes the reading of the whole? So moved, Councilman Persky. Second, Allison Pickard. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. The motion carries. Madam Secretary, please read the minutes of January 4th, 2021. The meeting was called to order by Chairman Sarah Lacey at 6 p.m. Ms. Ravian gave the invocation and led the Pledge of Allegiance. The meeting was held remotely via Zoom webinar, beginning with a roll call of all present. And Madam Chair, if we can, we have not gone into any more of the agenda and Ms. Abney is now in the meeting. That's, uh, let's, Reopen the invitation to audience then. Ms. Abney, you have two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Ms. Abney, if you could unmute yourself, please. Oh, hello. I'm sorry. Are we there? Yes. Okay. Ms. Abney, you have two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Yes, Jennifer Abney, 8436 Garland Road, Pasadena, Maryland, 21122. Um, I am the Regional Vice President of the Northeast for Cinemark Theaters. Uh, we have our location in Anne Arundel Mills Mall. Uh, we spoke or I spoke to the group a few months back when we were looking to try to make our first attempt to reopen. Uh, and I appreciate all the, uh, the help and, and attention that was given to us and our ability to do that. And now we're coming back once again to ask for the same consideration um, as of this meeting. And I apologize for technical difficulties. I'm not quite sure what the other two gentlemen covered, um, but we do not have any COVID cases across the U.S. Um, that are currently traced back to movie theaters. Um, as you all know, back in September, uh, we opened uh, with the same protocols and procedures, in some cases enhanced, as all the other businesses that are currently allowed to operate. Um, we're doing all the same thing that restaurants are doing. We have our plexiglass, our team in masks and gloves, our guests in masks. Um, very, uh, very high standard sanitation protocols. And really what we're just looking uh, to get is the same consideration that um, other businesses in the county are currently receiving. Um, you know, you can drive about 20 miles uh, from my theater to our location in Towson, Maryland, uh, which has been able to continue operations uh, through this. They've been able to do it uh, safely uh, the same way that we're able to do it. Um, you know, and if other uh, if people can travel to other counties uh, in order to seek entertainment, uh, we don't see any reason why with all the businesses open in the uh, Anne Arundel Mills Mall complex, um, like I said, currently open, uh, what it is, you know, we're not able to currently do so. So I'm just asking for the kind attention of the county to take into consideration everything that we've done and everything that we're prepared to do to serve the guests of Anne Arundel County as safely as we can uh, and hope you'll allow us to open. Thank you, Ms. Abney. Okay, now our invitation to audience is definitely closed. And um, I believe that I left off with stating that the motion to approve the minutes of January 4th, 2021, actually the motion wasn't made yet, right? You read a few lines, Madam Secretary, I think. Yes, my apologies, Madam Chair. I should have waited for that to uh, conclude. So we do need a motion to adopt the minutes. Okay. 
Motion to adopt Councilman Prusky. Thank you, Mr. Prusky. Is there a second? Councilman Rodvian, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The minutes of January 4th, 2021 stand approved as read. Madam Secretary, please read the titles of any bills to be introduced this evening. Bill number 521, an ordinance concerning current expense budget, Board of Education, supplementary appropriation and transfer of funds. Bill number 621, an ordinance concerning Millburg Special Community Benefit District, approval of loan and assignment agreement. Bill number 721, an ordinance concerning zoning, housing for the elderly of moderate means, live-in caretakers. Bill number 821, an ordinance concerning construction and property maintenance code supplement, permits, residential peers and riparian rights. Bill number 921, an ordinance concerning civil emergencies duration. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read the titles of any resolutions to be introduced this evening. Resolution 521, resolution condemning the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol building on January 6, 2021, and urging the peaceful transition of power on Inauguration Day. Resolution 621, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County Executive to increase capacity in re religious facilities. Resolution number 721, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County Executive to permit alternative facial coverings while inside fitness centers. Resolution number 821, resolution urging the county executive to increase capacity for fitness centers to 50%. Resolution number 921, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County executive to increase capacity for gaming facilities to 50%. Resolution number 1021, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County executive to reopen indoor theaters. Resolution number 1121, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County executive to increase personal services establishment capacity to 50%. Resolution number 1221, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County executive to increase indoor restaurant capacity to 50%. Resolution number 1321, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County Executive to increase retail establishment capacity to 50%. Resolution number 1421, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County Executive to increase recreational, indoor recreational establishments capacity to 50%. Resolution number 1421, resolution urging the Anne Arundel County Executive to permit youth sports. Thank you, Madam Secretary. May I have a motion to suspend the rules to add resolution number 521 to the agenda for vote this evening? Councilwoman Rodman, so moved. Is there a second? Councilman Prusky, second. Thank you. Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules to add resolution number 521 to the agenda for vote this evening? Ms. Hare? Nay. Ms. Pickard? Aye. Mr. Volke? Nay. Mr. Kursky? Aye. Ms. Fiedler? Nay. Ms. Rodvian? Aye. Ms. Lacey? Aye. Four in the affirmative, three in the negative. The motion to suspend the rules to vote on resolution number 521 this evening is defeated. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Please read the title of bill number 10920. Bill number 10920, an emergency ordinance concerning licenses and registration, fees for the registration or renewal of short-term residential rentals. Thank you. Ms. Rodvian and Mr. Prusky are co-sponsors. Ms. Rodvian, um, if you'd like to make a comment, now's a good time. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Lisa Rodvian, District 6. I, I think we've talked about this bill between our work session and um, I guess our work session, I feel like we've talked about it more than that, but just in a quick nutshell for uh, those that might be learning about it for the first time, this bill is intended to provide a little bit of relief for our short-term rental, um, residential renters. 
hosts, uh, those folks that basically rent out their home or part of their home on Airbnb and similar platforms. Um, this, the legislation establishing the registration process and the fee for registration was passed right before the COVID pandemic hit. So at the time we set the fee um, based on the recommendation of our inspections and permits office. Um, and we were, you know, we didn't really, um, we didn't have full confidence that that fee was reflective of the actual cost. Um, because of course, and, and not in any way to um, be dismissive of inspections and permits, but when you have a new process, it's difficult to, you know, you know, accurately calculate something you've never done before. So um, we went ahead and, and adopted that fee, but then very shortly after it was adopted and put into place, um, the pandemic hit. And like many other um, businesses around the county, um, folks that rely on Airbnb or, um, you know, short-term residential rentals is sort of the generic term um, for income, all of a sudden we're finding themselves with no income because folks weren't traveling. So um, in order to alleviate some of that burden, um, I introduced this bill to bring down uh, that fee instead of $200 per year paid um, for two years up front, it would be $50 per year paid for two years up front. Um, and this, um, you know, will basically allow, um, you know, kind of reduce that obstacle to entry, reduce the burden to entry for those folks that participate in, um, in this business um, at a time when their income may be very limited, but at a time when we at least see some light at the end of the tunnel, um, you know, we know that vaccines are uh, already starting in our county. They started, um, I don't today, yesterday, they started this week. Um, and um, there's likely to be some relief. And so those folks want to take advantage of um, future bookings, you know, for example, um, induction week, um, comm uh, commissioning week at the Naval Academy and things like that, big events that may be able to come back online, um, graduation, summer travel, um, so I, I'm hoping this is a way to encourage um, those folks to be able to get their um, small, usually just, you know, one person or a couple or a family owned business up and running again, um, as soon as the economy um, starts to bounce back. And um, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions that folks have about it. Mr. Kruski. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to my colleague in Annapolis. Um, I'm very limited and impacted by this bill, but I will tell you that I had people reach out to me and explain their cause, and they live in Annapolis and the surrounding area. And one of the things that people forget, there's a lot of PPP money, CARES money, HEROES Act money that went to a lot of businesses, but I can tell you home rentals wasn't one of them. So yeah. when we look at legislation that makes sense and trying to help people that are not able to get uh, some of the impact uh, funds that we have, I fully support that. And I certainly think that this is a common sense bill and I'm glad to uh, be a co-sponsor and I'll leave it at that. My colleague uh, articulately in a fashion provided a way um, with the correct information. So I, I do want to thank everybody and hope that everyone can support the bill. Thank you. Mr. Barron, would the administration like to comment? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And I apologize in advance. My uh, internet is acting a little funny tonight. So uh, if you, uh, uh, have any issues hearing with hearing me? Uh, I'm happy to repeat myself. Um, uh, Pete Barron with the administration joining me at the table is Mr. Africa from IMP and Ms. Kenny from Office of Law. Uh, the administration supports this bill. Uh, we have had um, about 89 applications, uh, 79 have paid um, as of the end of last month. Um, we would have to refund under this legislation about $23,000. Um, and I think the, the sponsors of the bill talked about um, the, how this industry has been hit hard. Um, they're not hotels, so they don't qualify, as I understand, under some of the other um, programs, either from the state or the county. So this is a small way to offer some relief. Are there any questions from the council before we move to public hearing? Ms. Rodgan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's not so much a question, it's just a little detail that I left out that um, Mr. Barron referenced 
Um, this bill also would include um, a refund of any, just out of a sense of fairness, for any um, host business that had already registered their home, um, you know, between the time that this passed back in or it went into effect, um, and I realize I don't know the effective date off the top of my head, but it was March sometime in that window, right around when the pandemic started and, um, and the current time. So those folks that have paid what we initially set the fee at, which was much higher, will get a refund in order to bring them on par with uh, those folks that would pay if this passes afterwards. So I just wanted to clarify and add that in. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Does anyone have any other comment before public hearing? Seeing none, not hearing my name called. Okay, then uh, we will now open the public hearing on bill number 10920. Madam Secretary, do we have any testimony received from members of the public? Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we've had nine submissions of written testimony on bill 10920. Uh, which was shared with the council and it was posted on the county website. Thank you. We will now hear from members of the public who signed up ahead of time. We have five individuals signed up to speak on this bill. Remarks will be limited to two minutes. When it is your turn, please unmute yourself and begin by stating your name and address for the record. First up is Susan Margulies. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Lovely, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Susan Margulies. I live at 113 Conduit Street and I am the co-admin of the Facebook group Support Annapolis STVR. And within that community, I advocate for primary resident hosts for people that just rent rooms in their homes. And uh, we would love for that fee to be reduced for two reasons. The first reason is that we think that the original justification for the $400 fee really no longer holds. There was an anticipated uh, belief that there would be 300 license requests, but as Mr. Barron testified, there were only 79. Um, additionally, I would like to point out that the city of Annapolis also charges $200 per year, and that includes a home inspection. So already there's kind of a discrepancy in fees, um, $200 per year on the county, $200 per year on the city, but the city includes a home inspection. Also, uh, we believe that the county is creating unnecessary work for itself for the perspective of someone that just rents a room in their home. We only rent on Airbnb and Airbnb collects and remits the taxes automatically. And they send uh, an in mass report with the license number and the amount of taxes collected to the county. But every month, the city will send out, mail out 79 forms to 79 people. And those 79 people will have to mail them back and the city will have to process them. But for people that just rent rooms in their homes, that duplicates information that the city's already received. So uh, we think that the fee should be reduced for all kinds of reasons. And finally, save commissioning week because uh, people just rent for commissioning week and $400 is just too much to pay for the privilege of posting your home on the platform. Um, and I'm out of time. So just thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Margulies, for watching your own time. I'm very impressed. Thank you. Next, we have Robert Green. Madam Chair, I do not believe Mr. Green is has joined the meeting. All right, I'll give him a second chance later. Do we have Diane Jones? No, Madam Chair does not appear. Ms. Jones is, has joined the meeting. Okay, Landry Kwajip. No, Madam Chair, Mr. Kwajip uh, is not here either. And finally, Scott Bateman. And Mr. Bateman, he is not on, he's not in the meeting either. Okay, Madam Secretary, I don't see the use of running through those names again. Um, 
Mm -hmm. none, have, none have joined since we have called their name. Okay. Then the public hearing on bill number 10920 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of bill number 10920. Bill number 10920, an emergency ordinance concerning licenses, registration, fees for the registration or renewal of short-term residential rentals. Thank you. Ms. Hare. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jessica Hare, District 7. Um, this is less of a question, I suppose, and more of a blue sky type of comment, but um, we had a lot of discussion about the setting of this fee at the beginning when this bill was introduced. Um, in 2020, uh, and and some debate over whether what was the appropriate amount, uh, you know, if any fee at all. And it was my understanding at the time that inspections and permits was going to sort of track the fee and see how it was going and come back and um, let the council know if that was really an appropriate fee or not. I I am fully supportive of lowering the fee at this time um, in in with this bill, but I I also wonder. Um, if with, with the sponsor's um, consent or blessing or consideration, <laughs> uh, working with the sponsor, if lowering the fee on a more permanent basis and not just to coincide with COVID is an appropriate action at this point. And so I, I guess based on that, I, I would like to move to hold the bill um, to work on an amendment to lower the fee permanently. Um, we, we have heard that there's only been 79 um, people who have signed up, INP was not able to back up the $400 fee at the work session when we spoke about it. Um, and at this point, I think it would be appropriate to, to move forward with just the $100 fee. Um, if later on INP can, can show it's costing more than that, then it could always be revisited. Uh, so with that, I would like to move to hold the bill for two weeks um, so we can work out an amendment. Thank you. Madam Chair. Is there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'm sorry. Um, Lisa Rodney in District 6, I'd like to second that motion. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you actually made the motion. Um, okay, so there is a motion on the floor to hold the vote on bill number 10920 um, until the next council meeting on February 1st. Is that right? That is correct. And it has been seconded. So uh, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Ms. Hare. Aye. Ms. Pickard. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Mr. Prusky. Aye. Ms. Fiedler. Aye. Ms. Rodvian. Aye. Ms. Lacey. Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion to hold the vote on bill number 10920 is passed. Um, Madam Parliamentarian, I have a question. Um, I've been reminded by Ms. Corby, the bill number 10920 as is written is an uncodified bill. And that in order to do what Ms. Harris is suggesting, it will require uh, a separate bill to be codified. Is that is that correct? Point of order, Madam Chair. You're cor that's correct. Thank you, Madam Stewart. Uh, Ms. Stewart, Mr. Volke. I was just gonna say, Madam Chair, I think that's now that we've got the motion and this has been held, I think that would have to be a discussion at the next meeting as to what we're going to do and if the bill can be amended or not. But because the votes already happened, I think any discussion about it would be out of order on them. Thank you, Mr. Bulky. I disagree and I think we could have the vote again because that was a material consideration that I don't think anybody was thinking of at, the, at the time. Just as a matter of procedure, um, the council could do a motion to reconsider the vote on the prior motion and then do it again, just as a matter of procedure. Um, okay, thank you. Then um, may I have a motion to re reconsider the vote on the prior motion holding the vote on Bill 10920 to two weeks from now? 
Ms. Hare. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jessica Hare, District 7. Before we move to reconsider, Ms. Shewitt, can you confirm whether or not we can amend the current bill? I think you could keep the first two lines, which describes it as an emergency ordinance concerning licenses and registration fees for the registration, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Everything else would have to come out. And it would look much like more like a regular bill, so to speak. And so, yes, that's what I, go ahead. If that can be done via amendment, then we can still amend it at the next meeting and move forward with it. And I think it makes sense. If you're telling me that can't be done via amendment, then that's a different story. There's a desire not to gut an entire bill and make it into a new bill and call it the same bill. It, there's a, I mean, typically in this kind of situation where you're rewriting the entire thing, we prefer to start with a new bill. Have we ever not done that? Uh, yes, there has been one time I can remember since I've been here that we have done that. In other words, really a re completely redid a bill through an amendment. So Just there's no 100% no definitive answer to the question. Let me call on Ms. Rodman. Thank you, Madam Chair. Lisa Radvan, District 6. So I would like to just suggest a possible alternative. Um, since this bill uh, would put the, the reduced fee, um, the end would be temporary under the bill as it's written, would end when the state's emergency order ends. Um, could we instead consider this bill, pass this bill, and then possibly pass the bill if the council wishes, of course, and then um, bring a second bill to make that change permanent and codify that permanent change. Would there be any reason we could not consider doing it that way? Uh oh, am I frozen? You're not frozen. You? We're all frozen <laughs> and answering you, Ms. Rodvian. Um, <laughs> Madam Parliamentarian, do you do you have a comment to? Ms. Rodvian's point? I, I, you could absolutely do it the way Ms. Rodvian um, suggested, and that is to go ahead and pass this bill, have the $100 fee go into effect, and then do a separate bill that could even repeal this bill and make, make it, that probably would repeal this bill and make it permanent. Um, so, and I also, um, as are the Legislative Council in the Office of Law, Ms. Klasmeyer, do you have anything to add to what I've said? You're muted. There we go. Got to find the right button. Sorry, Lori Blair, class liar, deputy county attorney. Um, yeah, I I agree. It can be done a couple different ways. It could be done to men and gut the entire bill. Not necessarily prefer, preferred. Um, this bill could be passed a temporary, as Ms. Rodian said, and then do a new bill that would codify the new fees and this temporary measure could be um, repealed through that enactment. So there's a couple different ways to go, but to actually make them permanent requires the actual amendment to of some, in some nature to include the uh, code language. Is that answered? I'm sorry. You're, you're muted, Madam Chair. Sorry, I was unmuted and I muted at the wrong time. We all, we all have this issue. Um, okay. I'm going to renew my call for a motion to reconsider the prior motion um, to hold the vote on bill number 10920. All right, so just again for procedure, you're, we're making a motion to reconsider the vote on the motion to hold bill 10920. Should that pass, we will then move on and do a new vote on the motion to hold. Just so everyone understands. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Allison Bigard. Lisa Rabi in District 6, point of information. I just want to clarify that what we're voting on right now is we are voting on the motion to reconsider. We are not actually voting on the motion to hold, correct? Just that is correct. On know what exactly what I'm voting on. Thank you very much. <laughs> So I shall read the motion to reconsider 
the vote on the motion to hold Bill 10920. Ms. Hare? Aye. Ms. Pickard? Aye. Mr. Volke? Sure. Mr. Prusky? Aye. Ms. Fiedler? Aye. Ms. Ravian? Aye. Ms. Lacey? Aye. Second in the affirmative, none in the uh, seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. The motion to reconsider the vote on the motion to hold bill number 10920 is passed. Now, Madam Secretary, um, do we have further discussion on the motion to hold or do we go I directly will, to the vote? We will go directly to the vote. I will read in the motion. Thank you. Motion to hold. Bill number 10920. Ms. Hare. Nay. Ms. Pickard. Nay. Mr. Volke. Nay. Mr. Prusky. Nay. Ms. Fiedler. Nay. Ms. Rodvian. Nay, and I would just like to say I really appreciate my colleagues being thoughtful in, um, you know, considering points um, on a motion that we literally all just voted yes for, and now we're voting nay for. So I, well, we'll see. So far, six, maybe seven. Nay. Ms. Lacey. Nay. None in the affirmative. Seven in the negative. The motion to hold vote on Bill Number One Hundred Nine Twenty is defeated. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And finally, would you please call the roll on bill number 10920? Ms. Hare. Aye. Ms. Pickard. Aye. Mr. Volke. Mr. Volke, I did not hear you. Sorry, Mr. I said aye. Okay. Mr. Prusky. I think Mr. Volke voted for me, but the answer is aye for me. Ms. Fiedler? Aye. Ms. Rodvian? Aye. Ms. Lacey? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Uh, bill number 10920 is passed. Thank you, Madam Secretary. And I have to say, what would your very last meeting be without something like a motion to reconsider and any other shenanigans we might have this evening? I thank Don't you all for keeping me on my toes. <laughs> Okay, well, then, Madam Secretary, when you're ready, please read the title of resolution number 121. Resolution number 121, resolution approving the continued service of Ann Badowski as acting personnel officer. Mr. Barron. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Pete Barron uh, with the County Exec Office joining me uh from personnel is Ms. Badowski and from law Ms. Blair Klausmeyer. Uh, resolution 1-21 approves the continued service of Ann Badowski as acting personnel officer through July 22nd, 2021. Ms. Badowski has uh, stepped up after uh, Ms. Dickerson uh, took another position and she is doing a wonderful job in this acting role. We ask for your continued support as we search for a, per, a permanent personnel officer. Uh, we are happy to answer any questions you may have, and we ask for a favorable uh, uh, motion on this resolution. Thank you. Mr. Volke. Thank you, Madam Chair. Nathan Volke, District 3. Um, good evening, Ms. Badowski. I have a couple of questions that are personnel related, and they actually, I was gonna ask you them before, but they dovetail into you being here. Um, I received the other day some information from Northern Roads uh, up in my district, and I got to see uh, the vacancy rate up there. And by my quick numbers that I was able to count on their org chart, I think they have 55 budgeted positions and they have 12 vacancies, which is about a 22% vacancy rate. Um, I was concerned by that, but I'm, I'm more concerned what that means for the whole county. What is the current vacancy rate in terms of budgeted positions versus positions filled through the county right now. Councilman Vokey, um, and Badowski, Officer Personnel. Um, unfortunately, I don't have that statistic at my ready, but I will get to that answer. 
Thank you very much. Madam Chair, if I may follow up. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. And, and Ms. Badowski, don't take this as me blaming you because I know you're in an acting capacity and you just got there and you're sort of picking up the situation as it was when you arrived. Um, but you're the person in the chair today. So with that, uh, the other question I would have is, I know we've been under a hiring freeze in the county, but I also have seen some projections both at the state and at the county level that suggest that revenues, um, sort of contrary to what we might think, actually look like they've remained pretty stable for the county. Uh, and it looks like the revenues have not dropped maybe the way that we would have thought they would uh, over the last 12 months or so. Uh, with that, I'm not asking you to weigh in on this at this moment, but I do think it would be appropriate to take a look at that hiring freeze and figure out if that still makes sense from the county's perspective, because I've certainly been getting a lot of constituent issues about services and answers and questions in the county not being sort of done as quickly as people would expect. Um, and I think some of it may have to do with um, the current way that people are working. But I think another big piece of it is the hiring freeze has kept you all from being able to sort of replenish the cupboard with more people there to do the work. So uh, I, I'm curious about the answer to that question and about whether the hiring freeze still is appropriate, whether we've got the revenue to move forward to fill out some of these positions or not. If you want to touch on that now, please feel free to do so. If you'd rather get an answer and get back to me, that's fine. Councilman Volke, uh, Pete Barron with the administration, the, the personnel officer uh, is not the person that decides whether or not there is a hiring freeze or there isn't. That's a decision for the county executive. And, and I can assure you that it is something that we are um, eager to lift and will do as, as appropriate and is something that the administration is looking closely at. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. And thank you, Madam. Are there any other questions from the council at this time? Okay, let's um, now open the public hearing on resolution number 121. Madam Secretary, do we have any testimony received from members of the public? Uh, no, Madam Chair, we've received no submissions of written testimony on resolution 121. Okay, and we did not have any members of the public sign up to speak. Therefore, the public hearing on resolution number 121 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 121. Resolution number 121, resolution approving the continued service of Ann Badowski as acting personnel officer. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no flags, hearing no one call my name. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 121. Ms. Hare? Aye. Ms. Pickard? Aye. Mr. Volke? Aye. Mr. Prusky? Aye. Ms. Fiedler? Aye. Ms. Rodvian? Aye. Ms. Lacey? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution 121 is adopted. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 221. Resolution number 221, resolution appointing a member to the Anne Arundel County Ethics Commission. Thank you. And Ms. Schultz, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Kaylee Schultz from the County Executive's Office. With me at the table is Christine Nieder from the Office of Law. Resolution 221 appoints Robert Mansfield, a Republican, to the Ethics Commission for an initial term expiring April 30th of 2024. For the past 20 years, Mr. Mansfield has worked to establish FMS Secure Solutions to provide certified module embedment and information system security engineering services to the Department of Defense, federal agencies, and DOD contractors. He resides in Odenton in Mr. Uh, in Councilman Krusky's district, and I am happy to answer any questions at this time. Do my colleagues have any questions or comments? Not at this time. We will now open the public hearing on resolution number 221. Madam Secretary, do we have any testimony received from members of the public? Uh, no, Madam Chair, we've received no submissions of written testimony on resolution 221. Okay, we did not have any members of the public sign up to speak. Therefore, the public hearing on resolution number 221 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 221. Resolution number 221, resolution appointing a member to the Anaconda County Ethics Commission. 
Is there any further discussion? Going once, twice, and three times. Okay. Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 221. Ms. Hare? Aye. Ms. Pickard? Aye. Mr. Volke? Mr. Prusky? Aye. Ms. Fiedler? Aye. Ms. Rodvian? Aye. Ms. Lacey? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 221 is adopted. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 321. Resolution number 321, resolution approving the appointment of a seven Severn River Commission member. Ms. Schultz, you have the floor. Thank you. And in this bittersweet moment, once again, for the final time, Kaylee Schultz from the County Executive's Office. Um, resolution 321 appoints Matthew Liptek to the Severn River Commission for an initial term expiring January 19th, 2024. As you most likely know from Mr. Liptek's cover letter, he is a passionate natural resources advocate. The chair of the Severn River Commission, Jim Burdick, agrees that Mr. Liptek would make a wonderful addition to the Severn River Commission. He does live in the watershed and resides in Councilwoman Pickard's district. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. And also, I forgot to mention, Christine Nieder is with me from the Office of Law. Thank you so much. Ms. Schultz, I don't think any of your new employers will hold that omission against you. Does anyone have any comments before the public hearing? Seeing none, we'll now open the public hearing on resolution number 321. Madam Secretary, do we have any testimony received from members of the public? No, Madam Chair, we've received no submissions of written testimony on resolution number 321. We did not have any members of the public sign up to speak. Therefore, the public hearing on resolution number 321 is now closed. Madam Secretary, please read the title of resolution number 321. Resolution number 321, resolution approving the appointment of a Severn River Commission member. Is there any further discussion on what is both Ms. Schultz's and Ms. Gray's last resolution before this County Council? Seeing none, hearing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on resolution number 321. Ms. Hare. Aye. Ms. Pickard. Aye. Mr. Volke. Aye. Mr. Prusky? Aye. Ms. Fiedler? Aye. Ms. Rodvian? Aye. Ms. Lacey? Aye. Seven in the affirmative, none in the negative. Resolution number 321 is adopted. Is there any other business to be brought before the County Council at this time? Mr. Volke? Madam, yes, Madam Chair, um, I'll be right back. Okay. No. <laughs> That's right. Get your tissues. Everyone who needs to get tissues, now's your time. I think I may need a mask. <laughs> yes, I do. Get the tissues. <laughs> Oh, okay, Ms. Gray. <laughs> I'll be reading it. I'll be reading it. I'm going to go now. Mr. Volke has just uh, presented Ms. Gray with the following citation that reads, whereas just before the dawn of the 21st century, Joanne Gray began her career with Anne Arundel County on Riva Road, where she became known for stopping scoundrel semicolons, banishing boorish brackets, and fine-tuning fonts for the county's finest legal eagles. And, whereas Joanne continued to sharpen her proofreading and editing skills until one summer day in 2001, when the county council became in need of a person capable of wrangling legislation from start to effective date, and Joanne Gray was appointed Assistant Administrative Officer to the County Council. And whereas after nearly 15 years as Assistant Administrative Officer, Joanne was asked to take the helm and was appointed as the Administrative Officer to the County Council in 2017. And 
Whereas throughout the years, Joanne has expertly guided and served numerous councils and worked with multiple administrations to see good work done and the county code preserved. And whereas after these many years of loyalty, undying to the entity known as the county council, Joanne Gray will hand over her shepherd's crook and find loyalty to her herself in retirement and a properly positioned beach chair with solo <laughs> cup, I might add, but that's not in the citation. <laughs> now, therefore, the County Council of Anne Arundel County, Maryland, hereby recognizes in sincere gratitude Joanne Gray for her steadfast devotion to the County Council and her longtime service to Anne Arundel County and its citizens and wishes her the very best in her retirement. I thank you all very much. It's a beautiful citation. Um, <laughs> Secretary, you have not finished hearing from us. Mr. Prisky. Uh-oh. Um, whoa, where do I start here? <laughs> um, I just want to say to, to Ms. Gray, uh, and a lot of people don't understand this, there's some folks on the screen right now that are the aides for council members and behind the office. And I think that all too often, uh, the council members are the face in the public, but the real work goes on uh, behind the scenes. And I have to tell you through all the years, uh, again, I'm a two-termer, so I've been here a little bit longer, but uh, Joanne has worked butt off for every single resident in this county. I can tell you that on weekends, evenings, um, telling us what to do, what's right, and also what not to do, um, and keeping up as the line, uh, she has really worked hard. And also, I think what's so important is she's given a lot of personal time, where there were times where she could have spent um, with her family. And, and so certainly, I wanna thank her from the bottom of my heart, not only as a council representative, but on behalf of the citizens of Anne Arundel County. Um, you are the prime example of a government worker who went above and beyond. And thank you, Joanne, for everything that you've done. God bless you. I wish you the best in retirement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Prusky. I appreciate the words. Ms. Pickard. Uh, Joanne, I might not get through this without crying, but um, we, we survived, well, we're still surviving this crazy pandemic. But I know you were skeptical when I took over as chair from Mr. Prusky. But with your guidance and support, I think we we did some amazing work in the last 10 months. And you have been an amazing um, part of, of my two years on this council. And I look forward to taking you with me into my life and beyond, maybe in a different setting so we can get out of the office and maybe onto the waterfront and have a cocktail someday. But um, you've done amazing work for this county. And, you guys uh, behind the scenes, everybody does not get to see these faces, but they've heard your voice um, and seen you on the TV, but you've really kept us all straight. And I know you've worked with some characters over the years. And I think this current council has been a challenge <laughs> in lots of ways for lots of reasons. So thank you, thank you, and enjoy. Enjoy tomorrow and your retirement beyond. You've done good work. Thanks, Ms. Picker. Very much appreciated. Ms. Radvian. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Lisa Radvian, District 6. <laughs> I, I'm probably going to be a little repetitive of what my colleagues have already said, but I just want to thank you so much. Um, you know, as a first time, well, I guess six out of seven of us, our first time um, elected officials, um, you really helped us transition into this and, and helped us um, you know, understand how the nuts and bolts of things work for this council. Um, so I cannot thank you enough for, for that and just making the transition very seamless. And if anything ever wasn't seamless, well, you, you sure fooled me because, um, you know, I, I've heard um, even thinking about when we moved to uh, virtual meetings, um, you know, I've heard uh, interesting things that have happened in other parts of the country. Um, in virtual meetings and ours was always like clockwork. And I know you were a huge part of that as were the other folks of, of the team, but um, we can't thank you enough. And I just wish you many happy days lounging on the beach um, and doing whatever it is that you wanna do in your retirement. Thank you, Ms. Rodvian. Ms. Hare. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Jessica here, District 7. Um, Joanne, for the, for the late nights you spent here, for the early mornings you spent here, thank you. I will dearly miss sharing an office wall with you. Um, I apologize now for all the times that I have seen you run out of your office because one of the seven of us, many times me, has caused some headache that has, you know, at the last minute, the 11th hour, caused you to go racing to fix whatever it is I've done. Um, so you will be very missed. I can't think of anyone to, to have better guided us the last couple of years. Thank you very much. Mr. Volke. Thank you, Madam Chair. As somebody who um, Joanne is still explaining how the procedure and the process works to as late as last night at 730 uh, when she was sending me text messages. I just have to say thank you so much for what you have done. Uh, I, I agree with so much of what everybody else has said. Mr. Prusky talking about how you are truly the consummate, um, you know, just absolute rock behind this institution and, and you do not let anything get in the way of making sure this is perfect. And it's going to be extremely hard to follow you up. I'm not even going to say replace you, just to follow you up. Uh, I know Ms. Corby is going to do an excellent job. But, you know, you're one of a kind. So thank you for all the wisdom that you have imparted to us, the patience, uh, the very frank conversations that you sometimes had. Uh, and, and we wish you nothing but the best as you go forward and hope you get a very well-deserved retirement. Thank you, Mr. Polkey. Ms. Fiedler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Amanda Fiedler, District 5, as I'm always reminded to say. Um, Joanne, I think the thing that has surprised me the most in the three years that I have known you um, is that you didn't retire as soon as you learned six new council members were headed your way. Um, Councilman uh, Prusky stated he's been here a very long time. I've only been here three years, as six of us have. And just to give you an idea of what you have dealt with in those three years, uh, helping us through a new auditor, a new legislative council, a flooded auditor's office, meetings that require multiple meetings that require the fire marshal, um, taking this virtual during a pandemic, and a partridge in a pear tree because the list could go on. So I just thank you for always telling like it is when we ask questions and opinions um, and just being a very huge part of our um, success here in this council. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wheeler. Um, Ms. Schuett or any um, of our legislative aides who have joined us tonight, you're also welcome to um, give any remarks to Joanne. Ms. Schuett. Yeah, um, I have known Joanne for 30 some years and she and I worked together in the Office of Law. She was always the best. Everybody in the Office of Law loved her because she always had a sense of humor. She was always willing to jump in to help on anything. And then you guys stole her from me and she came down to be the Assistant Administrative Officer where she was in a job that she loved the whole time and then moved up to where she is now, the, the leader of the council. And she's just done a superb job I'm hoping that I get to join her on the beach sometime this summer when the when the pandemic is gone because we've all been vaccinated. I'll miss you, Joanne. Thanks, Linda. Anyone else? Ms. Harris, I know you might want to say something. Okay, I'll give you a second. I think Ms. Smith wants to say something. Um, I just want to thank Joanne for all the help she was to me as coming on as the new county auditor. Um, I worked with her as an assistant county auditor and as a legislative audit manager going back and forth with amendments at budget time. Um, but then and when she took over as administrative officer, um, she definitely has been a sounding board for me. So thanks, Joanne, and enjoy your retirement. You're welcome and thank you. <laughs> Ms. Harris? Oh no, we can't hear you. <laughs> I should be unmuted. There you go. Now we can hear okay. you. I hadn't planned on saying anything. I just have to say the oldest and longest legislative assistants here on the council. I couldn't have done it without you. You were there every time we had an issue. 
You were there to help me solve it. And I just can't thank you enough for all you have done for all of us over the years. We'll always cherish you. Thanks, Linda. Anyone else? Raise, raise your hand, be brave. <laughs> Mr. Pipkin. Hello, uh, Matt Pipkin, District 7 Legislative Aid. Uh, I was told by a former legislative aide if I read a talk before the council, probably not for a good reason, but I think this could be the exception. Uh, <laughs> Joanne has absolutely been a rock uh, behind the scenes. Um, you know, I mean, when I first came in three years ago as a new legislative aide, I was scared. I wasn't sure the ropes, but she was very um, just very thoughtful and very caring and, and really was there uh, to be the support that you needed. And uh, Joanne, I, I know you're going to have a great retirement. Um, can't wait to be there with you sometime soon. So thank you. Thanks, Matt. Madam you know, Chair? Uh, yes, Mr. Barron, but before you start, let me just say, I know the other three of you are behind the scenes folks, but uh, you know, I'm going to call on you after Ms. Barron, so just so you know. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Pete Barron. Uh, I, I know this is a, a council party, but I would be remiss if I didn't extend the county exec and the administration's appreciation uh, to Ms. Gray. We have, um, when we came in, uh, I think it was maybe my first or second meeting was with Ms. Gray and um, she has always been fair and a strong advocate for the institution of the council is always looking out for for the work that you all do <laughs> and it is an incredible uh service to the county and i just want to extend our appreciation um to miss gray and hopefully you will invite me to one of those uh waterfront cocktail hours in the near future I will certainly think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. <laughs> Thank you, though, Pete. Thank you very much. Ms. Gannon, would you like to say a word? Yes, I would. Um, I just want to say how much um, you have taught me and I know have taught others. And uh, you will definitely be missed. Uh, you are a superhero in my eyes. Um, so. I can't wait to, and I hope I'm invited um, also uh, to sit on the beach with you for a cocktail. Um, but no, you will definitely be missed and um, shoes will be hard to fill. Um, that's definitely uh, true. And as we talked about before, um, you know, our institutional knowledge is leaving us at, in the county and um, that's very important. So. Enjoy your retirement, Joanne. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Sarah. Mr. Kemet. Thank you, um, Joanne. It has been an absolute pleasure uh, this last just over a year now uh, for me. Uh, I'm only sorry we didn't get more time to actually spend in the office before uh, everything happened. So thank you for all of all your knowledge and your kindness as I was kind of learning the ropes. I will I will miss our uh, conversation about all things nerd, uh, Star Wars and Marvel and all those wonderful topics. So uh, congratulations and enjoy your retirement. Thanks, Brian. Miss Etzel. And thank you for, as everyone has said, for showing us all the ropes when we joined the council and congratulations to you and enjoy having your Monday night back to yourself. I will look forward to that. <laughs> Thanks, Kristen. And uh, Ms. Corby, I know you are really behind the scenes, but in case you'd like to come on, we'd love to hear from you before I wrap this up at a unusually early hour. There you are. I'm here. Okay, I was planning on staying behind the scenes in my proper position until at least, uh, at least midnight. Um, also, I think there's uh, too many boxes on the screen now. So anyway, I hope I haven't impacted the view for too many here. Um, let's see, impromptu. Thank you everyone for, you know, for helping to make this special for Joanne. Joanne, you deserve more special than we can fit into one citation, one meeting. 
um, one half hour, whatever. It's really impossible to um, to tell you just how special you are and how much you have done for the county. Um, you are a superhero. You really are. And uh, that's a little joke between us. Um, I uh, have given Joanne uh, a keychain that marks her as Wonder Woman because she is a Wonder Woman. So, um, so thank you so much for what you have done for all of us. And um, I look forward to talking to you um, three times a day starting tomorrow to learn how it is you carried off being Wonder Woman for the County Council. Thanks, Laura. And yeah, we'll be talking more, <laughs> you and I. And thank you for everything you've done, Laura. Absolutely. From, from one Wonder Woman to another, um, I think we, we still have a couple of legislative assistants who, I don't know if their video works or not, but I know that Ms. Scarborough is with us, but I think her video is not Can you hear me? I'll yes, go. we can. Well, first I want to thank Linda Harris for admitting that she's the oldest legislative aide, because that like <laughs> totally took the pressure off me. And also, I lie about my age. So anyway, moving on. I'm second, I'm really disappointed. I can't figure out this video. Matt Pitkin was supposed to teach me this and he failed. So you're fired, Matt. Um, so seriously, I wanted to have my video on because actually my hair looks really good today. And I made Joanne a sign and then the sign says, can't you just stay for one more? Which is an inside joke. No, it's not. You've all heard her say it at any particular drinking establishment. So I wish you could stay for one more. But you know what, Joanne? I know where you live. I, I know your car license number. I have you on speed dial. I'll find you. Love, Pam. It's a little scary sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, love you too. Thank you, Pam. You know, you know where I live. Pam, you cracked up the whole panel. Um, I think. <laughs> We, we do still have Ms. Cuffey with us, if you'd like to say a few words. I wasn't planning on saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, the most junior person on the, on the staff might, might come up with something. <laughs> I think Ms. Cuffey and I, what, we've seen each other's actual faces three times? <laughs> I know, I think I've probably seen you the most, I think, out of everyone most recently. <laughs> Well, I I think we've I think we've hit everyone except for me, um, and if I'm wrong, then somebody should speak up real fast or raise your hand on Zoom if we have that. I don't know if we do. I guess we don't. Anyway, um, I won't take up too much time. I do just want to say um, to you, Joanne, that um, you have someone should count it up in you know since. 2001, I'm sure that even when you were the assistant administrative officer, you were giving council members advice um, and showing them the ropes. And you may have been learning things at the same time as them, but um, when I think you couldn't help but be yourself. And in that way, I see you as, you know, sort of a mother eagle or mother hen in a way um, where, you know, we council members have been babies and then fledglings and then we you know we are out in the world legislating um <laughs> wielding our pens the mighty pen right um and uh i think that's just been a real blessing for for the entire county council to have that kind of continuity um and that i hope Ms. corby will be able to provide um a similar function in her in her own way and i'm sure she will grow um the institution and and uh, the position, but um, having known you for only a short time, I'm sad I didn't get all the inside jokes um, when reading your citation. So I hope I put the emphasis on the correct syllables. Um, and the other, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say is, um, it's truly an honor to know that I'm your last fledgling chairwoman. Um, and I, you know, have been trying to crib off of everybody else for the past two years. So hopefully that's what will go forward from here and you enjoy your retirement. Thank you very much, Ms. Lacey slash Madam Chair. <laughs> <laughs> thank, 
thank you all. I'm I'm not really going to talk because let's let's make this a short meeting. Best gift ever. <laughs> Just want to say thank you all. Um, and yeah, it's been truly an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure uh, serving the county and the council uh, for these years. Um, I'm glad I came on board all those years ago. And uh, it's been a great ride. It's been a great ride. Thank you all very much for everything. And certainly for all your wonderful words tonight. I'm going to miss being here at times i'm going to miss a lot of people um and the thing that makes it really palatable is to know what incredible hands i'm leaving you in i'm very protective of the county council and i feel very confident and comforted knowing i'm leaving you in excellent excellent hands so thank you all i know i'll be seeing some of you and hopefully many more of us as the pandemic eases and vaccines are in arms. Um, you know, we have like eight more minutes before the captioner needs a break. So if you wanted to keep going. Um, I think we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm assuming then that there is no other business to be brought before the County Council this evening. And I shall read the final words. May I have a motion to adjourn? Pickard, so moved. Second. Hair, second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The County Council is adjourned until 6 p.m. on Monday, February 1st, 2021. Thank you all. Have a great evening. <laughs>